Joshua chapter 8. The reading is from verses 1 through 8. If you are there, would you shout, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Here is the reading of the word. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise. Go up to Ai. See, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And you shall do to Ai and her king as you did unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cow thereof shall you take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose and all uh, the people of war to go up against Ai and Joshua chose out, he chose out 30,000 men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in wait against the city, even behind the city. Go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. And I and all the people that are with me will approach unto the city, and it shall come to pass. When they come out against us, as at the first, that we will flee before them. For they will come out after us till we have drawn them from that city. For they will say, they flee before us, as at the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Then, everybody say then. Then, then you shall rise up from the ambush. And seize upon the city. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be when you have taken the city. That you shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord. You shall do. See I've commanded you. Ah, We got to take this city. Look at your neighbor and say, talking about how to get the victory. That's what we're talking about today. How to get the victory. God has commanded every one of us as children of God to enter into a realm, into a dimension, wherever we are, and we are to take charge. The Bible said the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The Lord has called you. To be the one that brings your family back together. To bring your community back together. God has called you to be the one who God raises up in this hour. To set the character and the tone that God wants for everywhere that your foot shall tread. The Lord said it shall be yours. You are the representative of the kingdom of the most high God. Beside him there is no other God. He has made you wonderfully in his image and in his likeness. And he has given you power to speak. And to call things that be not as though they were. The Lord has given you the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God. And by the way, said, where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. He has freed you and anointed you and put a word in your mouth. And the word is nigh on your tongue, even in your heart. God wants your tongue to be like the pen of a ready writer. Want you to call things that be not as though they were. Want you to speak to the mountain and command it to move. God is saying, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to open up doors for you nobody can close. I'm going to close doors that nobody can open. I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. Them that fight against you, I'll fight against them. When they come in against you one way, God said, I'll cause them to flee out seven ways. I'm the Lord, your God. And besides me, God is saying there is none other. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I'm the beginning and the ending. I am Jehovah Nisi, the God of your victory and your banner. I am God. I am the one that strengthens you. I'm Jehovah to sue the Lord your strength. When you are weak with me, you strong. And I'm commanding you, say the Lord, to be strong in the Lord. 
and in the power of his might to put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I've set you forth, sanctified you to be my own children. I am your God and you are my sons and daughters. We have to acknowledge God in critical situations. You can't run and call all Susie Q and everybody else. No, they going through probably stuff you don't even know about. They got their own problem. Every tub sits on its own bottom. You need to know God for yourself. Because Susan Q and your girlfriends and boyfriends won't be there all the time. Even mom and daddy, the Bible said they going to forsake you after a while. You got to learn how to stand before the Lord. Upright. Be steadfast and unshakable. Unmovable. You can't let the wind blow and bend you and break you. No. You got to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. That means you got to stay planted. Because they that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish like a palm tree. They're going to be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright. And there's no shadow of turning in him. In other words, you're saying that even though the wind blows, I might bend. But I won't break. You got to learn that there are things going to come. And you got to remember the foundation of the Lord stands sure. Joshua, the Bible said he got the elders together, ripped his clothes, put dust on his head, and he fell down on the ground crying to God, saying, Why? Why, Lord? Why am I going through all of this? Why is this happening to me? I'm your child. He was crying out. Sometimes we just lose it in front of God. He got all out of character, snot running down his nose, sackcloth dust flying everywhere. Looked like he'd been kicking a sack of flour. He was white as a ghost on the ground, hollering out for God, acting crazy, saying all kinds of stuff. He started saying stuff that a child of God shouldn't say. Some of us in a dilemma, we say stuff that we know we shouldn't be saying in front of God. Child of God shouldn't say certain stuff. I don't care how bad it looks. You got to understand God has not forsaken you. You just use, you, you got to understand, you just using the wrong methods. God never forsakes his children. He's Jehovah Shammah, which means he's there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You got to understand, it's like putting the wrong key in the door. He was using the wrong methods. Because when you put the wrong key in the door, you can be crying and throwing tantrums all you want to. It's like putting the wrong key in the door, then crying and throwing a tantrum because the door won't open. <laughs> and some of us trip out like that. There are some of us when we don't get the victory, we quick to cry out to God, and some of us blame God for it. Lord, why you let this happen to me? Oh, Lord, you know I've been serving you. <laughs> we get crazy in front of God. That ain't faith, that's fear. And that's self-pity. Touch your neighbor and say, you want something from God? You got to have faith, and you got to investigate why it happened the last time. Because God has given you the victory. Something you did wrong. The ball was in your court. He gave you dominion. Told you to be fruitful and multiply. Something you didn't understand because the word said that God's people are being destroyed for the lack of knowledge. God has already given you the victory. Made you the head and not the tail. Told you he gave you power over your enemies. Made your enemies your footstool. What you crying for? God said the just shall live by faith. Yeah, some of us, we don't get the victory. We, we cry out to God, oh, God, why you let this happen to me? We say, I should have never went there. I should have never tried that. I shouldn't even join. Uh, uh, I should have never got married. Uh -oh. 
we have a blessed marriage, but now because the devil threw a rock and hid his hand, we started attacking each other. When you let them talk you into shack it up, you lower your standards. When you sleep with them before you marry you, you lower your standards. When you follow them in the world, instead of having them follow you to church, you lower your standards. When you think because you belong to God, victory is automatic, so you don't prepare yourself, you don't prepare your words. You just say anything out of your own mouth. I want you to hear me. The Bible declares in Proverbs 15 and 1 that a soft answer turns away wrath. Your words have to be seasoned with salt. I want you to hear me. They fail to recognize the authority of AI. They underestimated the enemy. But tell your neighbor this time when I go in. I'm going in with a praise in my belly. This time when I go in, I will have stretched out between the porch and the altar. This time when I go in, my tithe will be paid. I will have given liberal offerings. And I will have given God glory. This time when I go in, I'm lifting up the name of Jesus because I heard the Lord say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I'm going in next time with a praise in my belly, with my mind made up that for God I live and for God I may have to die. But I'm going in. And when I go in this time, I will get the victory. Can you say yeah? Because this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. And here is a testimony. And the testimony of God is sure that God took Jesus, walked him up, go, go the hill, set him on a rugged cross, laid him there for the sixth to the ninth hour, took him down, and put him in a rich man's tomb. And he laid there for the, the three days. But the Bible said after God had perfected him, he came forth like pure gold. And the Bible said the angels came down and ministered unto his knee. And the scripture said God spoke from the heaven and said, I'll not leave mine holy one to see corruption. Tell your neighbor, you might be in a grave, but God sending angels, if you live in holy, if you have repented before the Lord and made it up to build mine, then I'm going to put God first. I'm not going to lower myself. When I go in this time, I'm going to be in holiness, giving God the glory and giving God the praise. Tell your neighbor, I know how to get the victory. Because the Bible said that the just shall live. By faith in the Son of God. <laughs>